You know, every year for the past few years, I've made a retain list video for Sheffield Wednesday. And this one is a much tougher, a lot tougher. I'm actually quite sad. So yes, it's been an absolutely fantastic season. Points records, unbeaten records, playoff drama making history. The season has been crazy for Sheffield Wednesday. So, so many of us fans have been up on a high. However, that had to start come crashing down and the feel good had to end at some point or start to dim a little bit. And I think the first sign of that of crashing back down to normality is the retained list when you find out which players from this season are going to be leaving us. And that has happened just now. So the club's website reads as follows. The Owls can confirm our player retain list following the conclusion of the 2022-23 season. Dennis Adeneran, Jaden Brown, Sam Durant, Ryan Galvin, Ben Hennigan, Jack Hunt and David Stockdale will all be released upon their expiry of their current contracts. Wednesday have exercised options to retain Barry Bannon, George Byers, Lee Gregory, Dominic Iorfa, Liam Palmer and Josh Windass. New contract offers have been made to Fasayo Delibasharu, Marvin Johnson and Callum Patterson. Aidan Flint and Reese James leave Hillsborough following their respective loans. The Owls would like to thank all departing players for their services following a memorable campaign and we wish them the very best for the future. Too right. You know what? I, I looked at this and actually it's not as harsh. I was expecting, a re I was expecting some shocks, right? The only one you could possibly say in there as a real shot that's not even a real shot given the injury record is a Deneran for me. That one is quite a big one in terms of a player that's got a lot of potential in there, but we've actually exercised options on... I think we've not been as hot, anywhere near as harsh as I thought we were going to be. And I'm, I'm glad about that, but it's also a case of are these players now going to be depth players or are they going to be players that are actually in our starting lineup as we head into the championship? Right, let's start at the top then. Let's start with Dennis Adeneran because he is a player that I think is going to be an absolute player if he can sort his injuries out. I think he's got the right attitude. I think he's he's a great midfielder. I think he's someone that I would definitely be giving another contract to if it hadn't have been the injury situation. So I can see what happened there. I really hope it's one of those things where it's just a Wednesday thing and he can kick on because he's 24, I believe, and he's still got a career in there, definitely. I think any club picking him up on a free transfer will be in for a good player there because if he stays fit, he's he's a good he's a good player. He's a good player. I'm kind of sad. I'm really sad about that one because I thought we've got a lot of players in midfield. I feel like potentially if we didn't have such an excess of players in midfield at the minute, I think Adeneran would have been one we possibly took a gamble on, but we've gone for Fizz instead. I thought it was definitely going to be one of them two that got released. So unfortunately for Adeneran, it's him and it's the injury record, but he's going to be a great player for someone if he can keep fit. Jaden Brown's the next one. Still young, Jaden Brown. Another one that's still young and will have a career ahead of him. He started to actually be called upon towards the latter end of our season with our injuries. I think a lot of us had written him off. A lot of the fan base seemed to have written him off early on, but he's really come in and done a good job towards the latter end of the season and sort of stepped up for us where we needed him. I do understand why we'd probably be going, right, we need to be looking at new players in these positions. So it's one that you can potentially understand. I think it's a good time for him to probably move on and find himself a first team slot because he's had that experience now at the latter end of the season. He can probably kick on and get into somebody's starting 11 now and I wish him all the best. I'll do these two together. So Sam Durant and Ryan Galvin, again, the slightly younger players, the players that... I think it's got to that point where you go, well, they can't really play the under 23s, the under 21s football anymore. They need to go out and they need to actually find themselves some clubs. So it's potentially one of those where it's more beneficial for their career that they're released on a free so a club can pick them up and they can get game time. It's one of those where it's it's not quite probably going to work out at Wednesday, especially with the step up. If we'd have stayed in League One, maybe it's one you, you keep around. But with this, it's now going to the next level for Wednesday and those sort of players that haven't quite made it into the first team squad fully are going to have to go and find some football elsewhere. And I hope they do that. I hope the player, the younger players that we're seeing come through the Wednesday ranks actually, you know, kick on and do fine football. This is an unfortunate one and this one did shock a couple of people. Ben Hennigan, that's purely down to his injury, I believe. If he wasn't injured this season and had a big injury like that, I think we'd be, I think we'd be He'd have another contract. It's as simple as that. But I don't think we've decided to take the risk because of the injury and the step up. 
Ben Hennigan, though, is going to have no problem finding another club at League One level. If he's coming back fit, he can play. Next up is Jack Hunt. Now, this is another sort of sad one because Jack Hunt, he's a player that I've always thought has really treated Wednesday well. He came, he played for us for quite a while. We sold him to Bristol City. He didn't really want to go, if you remember. He never really wanted to leave, but we sold him for something like 1.3 million or something back then. And then when we got relegated, he was going on a free. He came back. He spent two years. He scored us the winning penalty at Peterborough. He played for us solidly over those two years. He's come in and done a job for us. And I think Jack Hunt is one of those players that I'm always going to remember quite fondly as a Wednesday player because he's always just, just done his job. He says he's got a lot left to show. So maybe he goes on to another club now and he might still have a few years left in the locker where he feels like he can do it. So that won't be at Wednesday, but he has spent a lot of time here across the two spells. So he's one I think all Wednesday fans have wished the best. And this one's a sad one purely because of the celebrations that have been occurring recently. David Stockdale. David Stockdale, he seems such a character. He's somebody who interacts with the fans on social media, but he never does it in a real baity way. I remember a lot of fans when we signed him, we go, oh, we didn't really like him. He's that player that sits on the ball and annoys us, you know, time wasting in League One. But the way his character brought us round and the way he came and when he did it for us, it was so much sweeter. It, it's just the way to sort of get yourself into a fan base. Just act like David Stockdale has. He's been great with all the fans. He's been great with all the squad. You can see when he got... Um, swapped out for Dawson. I hate, I didn't want to say drop because they did swap out for a while. But when Dawson came in, there was no unprofessionalism. There was no, oh, I'm going to take it. He wanted to take his spot. Obviously, he was being competitive, but he wasn't vindictive about it. He showed a true professionalism and he got behind Dawson. And Dawson improved his level. He knew he had David Stockdale, an experienced keeper, a keeper that was snapping at his heels basically with all that experience that he had to perform otherwise he was getting swapped out and it was it was nice to have two keepers pushing each other that season and his professionalism it'll have done wonders for Dawson's development and general morale of the squad he is one I'm sad to be losing from the dressing room to be honest it's one I wish we could bring in as a coaching role or something but it is, it is a bit sad that one. I can see on the footballing perspective, you want to bring new keepers in. We've gone up a level, Dawson, and then bring competition in for Dawson. Maybe even look at, you know, the, he might even think, oh, I need another striker. I need, I need another goalkeeper that I can potentially start over Dawson. We don't know what Darren Moore's currently thinking, but doesn't make Stockdale leaving any less sad on that one. Now, this bit's interesting. It's the bit about where we've retained Barry Bannon. We knew that. We... We also knew about a Josh Windass clause. I don't know how many, I don't know how well that was reported. That the Windass clause has been about for a while. George Byers, I can't remember if we knew he had a clause, but they've exercised that. Gregory, I had no idea. I had no idea he had a clause in that, and Iorfa had no idea. I knew Palmer had a clause, but the Gregory and Iorfa, the fact that they've just been extended. Iorfa was one that we were thinking, oh, is he going to release him? Gregory was one we were definitely thinking, oh, is he going to release him? The one thing I've got with that is I don't see Gregory being a starter, so it must be a squad player position or something like that. I don't know how it's going to work next season, but it's interesting to see that we've retained. That's that's the soft side of it. That's where I say it's a bit softer because I was half expecting to see Lee Gregory get released. Potentially, I offer, but I offer is a player I didn't want to release because there is a player in there. So that's good retention. Chef, you know, ex exercising those options, they're probably another year. Then you go into talks about the sixth month mark in this season, seeing how they're getting on. We're not financially tying ourselves to these players for too long. And probably because there's an option in there as well. I can't imagine the terms are going to hurt us too much. Controversial one for some people. Deli Bashiru getting offered another deal. He's 22, I believe. 22. There's a player in there. If Darren Moore believes he can unlock it, I fully trust him. Because when some matches, when Fizz comes on, you can see the player you can he's got he's young but he's got that power that a lot of players around that age in the midfield don't have and i think there's go he's going to be a real player if he gets his head down he just can't i think bannon said it before he can't just can't get swept away by it all but hopefully the promotion he'll understand what sheffield wins is all about he'll have bought into that he'll get his head down and he can become that player. It'll be interesting to see what deal we've offered him there, but there is a player in there. I know that one was after some performances this season where there was talks about him leaving on a free. He might not sign this contract, by the way, but talks, he says he wants to. He said, he said he'd wanted to this week. So I know there was some talks about 
if he leaves is his head in it. A lot's happened this past couple of weeks. A lot can change. Marvin Johnson's an interesting one, though, because I don't see him starting at left wing back. Every team targets Marvin Johnson. Now, he's great going forward, but because he goes forward, he's 32. He shouldn't be having to run that far back all the time to do the defending as well, which is why he probably gets targeted by half the League One teams. The championship, that's going to be even worse. So we better have more options on that left wing back. Or is he going to play with midfielders? Because a left midfielder, Johnson as a winger, or just, you know, that sort of wide-sided midfielder, there's, he's crossing... He, he goes and takes on a man. Got no problems with him there. It's the fact that he has to run the length of the pitch to come back. And that's not me saying he can't do it. I'm just saying people target him and make him work for it. So that's an interesting one. And Callum Patterson's been offered the contract. Now, I believe he was going to be off to hearts. He'd have been off to hearts if we'd have still in League One. But he said he wants to play in the championship. Great utility player, but also just shown how much we miss him when he's not around this season. He's that player that would get the ball down, do the hold-up play, do the dirty work, and he is really good at that. But he's also just a great professional, and I think offering him a contract here was was a great idea. I'm really happy with the ones we actually offered the contracts to, you know? I can see some people already saying, oh, have you been too nice? Maybe. Time will tell. And obviously, Aidan Flint and Reese James have gone back to their parent clubs. I can guarantee you we will be putting a bid in for Reese James because what a player he is. And even this week, he's been saying, we're all Wednesday, aren't we? So we'll see what happens. But he said it with a smile. So he could be a Sheffield Wednesday player. But yeah, guys, we will discuss this more in detail on the Talking Wednesday podcast when we have time to think about it all that is on this channel if you are watching this video. But let me know in the comments what you think to this retain list. Is it too soft? Of what is your favourite player left? I'd be interested to hear all your thoughts on it. Let me know that down below. But for now, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, do all those things, and keep watching right here on Dexterity Box.